Welcome to the tutorial creating a scene through stage standalone. In this tutorial I'm going to take you through the creation of a scene from start to finish. So let's start by launching the software. So if you're using a Mac you would go to Finder, Applications, and scroll down until you see the folder Toon Boom Harmony and then double click on the stage icon. If you're using Windows, you would go to Program Files, which you would access from the Start menu, which is generally located in the bottom left-hand corner, and you would search for Toon Boom Harmony and also enter the folder to find the stage icon. So at this point, if we want to use Harmony Stage as a standalone software, we would select Work Offline instead of connect to the database. So if this is your first time ever launching Harmony, you would usually see two more windows than I have displayed here. The first one would be the license agreement, which you should of course read very carefully, and then accept. Um, the second dialog box you would have would be for your shortcut preference style. Um, and they would ask you if you'd like to configure Harmony Stage to the Flash uh, shortcut style. So if you're used to working with Flash, um, you should definitely say yes and accept that configuration. Um, however, if you're used to working with other Toon Boom softwares, you might want to say no to that configuration and stick with the shortcuts that you know. Um, I have already configured Harmony Stage to use the Flash keyboard shortcuts, mainly because the user guide is written that way and I find that it might be easier to follow along uh, to cross-reference back and forth between this video and uh, the documentation if the shortcuts are the same. What's important to know is that whatever configuration you choose, it can be changed later on through the software. So nothing is set in stone, so don't worry about the choice that you make. So let's begin by taking a look at what is known as the welcome screen. There are several different parts to the welcome screen, but what we'll do is start with the new scene section. So you might be asking yourself, well, what's a scene? Well, this file that we're about to create is a scene. Because unlike other softwares where the entire animation might be in one file, what we recommend is that you create a different scene or a different file for every scene of your animation. So the first thing you have to decide is where you're going to save this project. And you can do that by choosing a project directory. So if you click on the Choose button, a browser window comes up that allows you to choose a destination for where you can save your file. So I'm going to select Desktop, although I would recommend normally to never save anything on the desktop. But for this um, tutorial in particular, I will do that. And I'm going to name my folder uh, Animation and say Create. And as you can see, it appeared on my desktop. I'm going to choose that, and you can see that it now appears in my project directory. The next thing you have to do is choose a project name. So I'm going to name this Creating a Scene after the name of this tutorial. The next thing you have is the various resolutions that exist for a project. In this window, we have um, several of the most standard resolutions, so HDTV, NTSC, PAL, etc. Um, it's set by default to NTSC, but this can also be changed. And beside each resolution name, you have its width and height in pixels, its frames per second, and the aspect ratio. If you decide that you'd like to create a custom resolution, you need only to click on this plus sign here to bring up the new resolution dialog box. So you can never have two resolutions with the same name, so you have to change the name. So I'm going to change this to my resolution. And I'll give it a width of 600, and then give it like a maybe some weird dimensions, like a height of 600, so it's a perfect square. And the frames per second, I'll change to 30, and say Create. Then if you decide that you would like to delete this resolution, uh, you only need to select it once again in this window and then click on the minus sign here and it deletes it from the list. So the second section that you have are the recent scenes section. Um, here we happen to have one because I opened up a scene for the um, 
creating a scene through the Harmony Network tutorial, the, the tutorial prior to this one. Um, if you're opening Harmony Stage for the first time, you might have nothing listed here. So whatever is listed here is actually a link, and you can see that because as I pass my mouse over it, this line appears. And so if you click on it, it'll automatically open the scene without you having to browse through your computer files to the directory of where you last saved that file. So that's a really fast way to open a recent scene. The next thing you have is the open scene link here at the bottom. And what this does is it opens a scene that isn't a recent scene, but that you know already exists um, on your computer, such as that Harmony Stage sample material scene. So actually, let's take a quick look at the scene structure here. I'm going to go up a couple of uh, files. Okay, so let me just drag this so you can see the whole file name. So this is actually the name of um, my scene, but it appears as a folder. So what we created in the first line of the welcome screen when you chose a project name or the second line, the first line was the directory, is what you would see on this file. But it's interesting to know that when you go into it, the actual EXE, so the executable file that you would double click on to open that scene, is this one here with the blue harmony icon and the extension X stage. So um, unlike other files where it usually there's just the executable file, Harmony creates scenes that are an entire package. So you can never separate this executable file from all these other files in this scene. So if you wanted to give this scene to somebody else, you couldn't just take this icon, drag it out, and give it to somebody. It wouldn't work without all these other files in this folder. So what you would do is actually copy this folder and give it to somebody as your scene. So let's cancel this. And the last thing that we have um, in the Harmony welcome screen is a link to the documentation. And this has a link to several user guides that exist for Harmony, both the Harmony Network and the Harmony Stage standalone software. So let's go back here to our new scene section and click on the Create button. So just like many other softwares, Toon Boom Harmony Stage has several redundancies built in. So what this means is that there are several ways of accessing the same tool or command uh, through a toolbar, through the top menu, and also through a specific keyboard shortcuts that are listed beside the menu item. For example, um, you can open up or create a new file by going to the file menu and selecting either new or open. You can use their keyboard shortcuts, which are listed beside. So for new, it's Command N. Um, on Windows, I believe that's Control N or open uh, Command O. On Windows, that's Control O. Or you could use their icons in the toolbar here. So this toolbar is known as the File Menu Toolbar. If you take that out, it says File at the top. And so you can either click on the first one, which will create a new file. If you press that, you'll get a mini version of what you saw in the welcome screen, the ability to choose a directory, give your new scene a name, and choose its resolution. Or if you want to open a pre-existing file, you can click on the second icon here. And it asks you if you would like to save the before continuing, and I'm going to say don't save. So then a browser opens up where you're able to search for a scene that you'd like to open. I'm actually just going to cancel this, though. So if you're used to working with um, Harmony Stage through the Harmony Network, you might notice as you scroll through some of these menus here at the top that there are fewer menu items that exist in Harmony Stage standalone. Um, and that's because that's exactly just it. When you're working with the network, there are several items that exist um, through the network that then become unavailable when you're using Harmony Standalone. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is how to access the help documentation from within the software. So we saw where to access it through the welcome screen, but you have to access it through the software by going to the help menu and selecting the menu item help. So the default um, document reader on your computer opens up, and I know for Mac it's not Adobe, 
um, reader, but it's actually very important, particularly in this case, to download and install um, Adobe Reader because otherwise you will not see this file in the structure that it was meant to be seen. So there are actually several user guides that exist. Um, you know, the, the Harmony Stage user guide, this is the main one probably, the Harmony Network guide, another good one to know, the utilities, uh, scripting, keyboard shortcuts, etc. So if we look at the Harmony, let's say, stage user guide, there are several ways of doing a quick search. Let me just expand this. When inside this document. So you can access it by going directly to a subject heading that you see is familiar um, or going to one of its subheadings by uncollapsing it. Another way that you can do a search is actually by typing in a keyword in this field here in the corner. And then you can click on one of these items to see if they match your search. Another way that you can do a search is by going into the contents and by clicking on one of these headings. Because it's a interactive PDF, it'll go directly to that page. So as you can see, there are many ways to search this PDF and get the answers that you're looking for. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial, creating a scene using Harmony Stage Standalone.